The light of guidance, 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 the light of guidance. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyid al-Mursaleen amma ba'd fa'audhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim as-salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulullah as-salatu wa salamu alayka ya Habibullah as-salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabiyyullah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nurullah The Prophet of Mankind, the peace of our hearts and mind, the most Generous in kind, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is reported to have said, the one who recites durood, salutations, salawat, salam, once upon me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers ten mercies upon that person. Subhanallah, sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, salatu wa salaman alayka. Ya Sayyidi, Ya Habibi, Ya Rasulullah. Marhaba, Khushamdeed. Welcome to one and all to another exciting and uh, beautiful silsila and episode of this lovely series known as The Light of Guidance. Alhamdulillah. Very beautifully, we all know the light of guidance indeed refers to the beautiful and wonderful religion of Islam, the universal religion, the religion which, which teaches us how to love one another, the religion which teaches us how to have respect for one another, the religion which teaches us the adab of not only our elders, rather our parents, our siblings, our relatives, even our neighbors as well. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Yes, indeed, the person who followed this beautiful deen of Islam, he is on the straight path and he has attained the light of guidance. And unfortunately, the person who turned away from this beautiful light of guidance ended up being misguided. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us firm on the teachings of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us firm on maslaki haq, maslaki ahlu sunnah wal jama'ah. Before we begin with our silsila and our topic for today let us make a good intentions for indeed nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam has stated niyatul mu'mini khairun min amalihi the intention of a believer is better than his action the more good intentions you make the more reward you will attain from the exalted court of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we can make good intentions such as uh, you know, whenever I hear the name of Allah, I will say Jalla Jalaluhu wa ta'ala, wa ta'ala wa subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will glorify and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever I hear the name of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I will recite durood, salutations, salawat and salam upon Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When I hear the beautiful name of the awliya'i kiram, of the sahaba'i kiram, I will say radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Or if it's a female, radiyallahu ta'ala anha. When I hear the name of the awliya'i Allah, I will say rahmatullahi ta'ala alayha, alayhi wa alayha. But likewise, whatever I learn, inshallah, I will first of all try and implement it in my life and lifestyle, and then I will pass the message on to others as well. These beautiful intentions you can make, the more the merrier, the more good intentions you make, the more reward you will attain from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. So today, inshallah, we will be discussing the virtues, the excellence, and the beauty of this beautiful month, Rajabul Murajab. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Let us all uh, listen to a beautiful narration before we begin today's discussion. There was a pious lady in the city of Basra, and before she passed away, she made a will to her son. And uh, she said that, you know, when I leave this world, then bury me in the same coffin or in the same clothes which I used to wear whilst I used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Rajab. What a unique will this was. And people today make the world such as, you know, uh, when I leave this world, then, um, you know, so and so things, such and such thing must happen to this, such and something must happen there. Uh, I must be given this, I must be given that. Some people unfortunately even make the wills after they leave this world, they want some VIP treatment, you know, that uh, I should be taken in this car, I should be given this protocol or this protocol. I mean, this uh, weird wasiyat and wills which people make, Allah, Allah, Allah. But look at this beautiful lady. She said that, you know, she told her son that shroud me, give me a coffin in the clothes that I used to wear whilst worshipping in the month of Rajab, Allah, Allah, Allah. So after she left this world, her son buried her, but he forgot the, the will of his mother. 
that you know he was supposed to bury her in the same clothes which she used to wear whilst worshiping Allah Subhanahu in the month of Rajab. So he forgot about that. He took another coffin. Obviously, at that time, the son is emotional, the son is worried, the mind is somewhere else. So he took a different coffin and he shrouded his mother in that coffin and he buried his mother. When he returned home from the graveyard, he found that the clothes in which he shrouded his mother, the clothes which he gave as a coffin to his mother, those clothes were at home. So he, he, he was worried that, I mean, this is the same coffin I put on my mother just now, now, when I buried her, and I came home and the coffin is at home. And, you know, after anxiously, he remembered that my mother told me I was supposed to give her the coffin of, of, of the clothes which she used to wear in the month of Rajab while she was performing ibadah. So he quickly went and started looking for, for, for the piece of coffin, for, the, for those clothes in which he was supposed to shroud his mother, Allah, Allah. But he found that... Hmm, it, all of a sudden, it disappeared from its place. Those clothes were not there. So he was worried and astonished. The clothes in which I was supposed to shroud my mother, those clothes are not here, and those clothes, I didn't use it for her. And the clothes which I did shroud my mother in, those clothes are at home, and my, 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 I just buried my mother now. So whilst in this, in, in this uh, you know, state of confusion, Allah, 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 a voice was heard from the unknown that, take back your shroud. We have shrouded her in, in the cloth which she desired. We have shrouded her. We do not leave the people who fast in Rajab to be stricken or to be stricken with grief in their graves. Allah, 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 subhanAllah. We do not let the people who fast in the month of Rajab have some sorrow, have some grief in their graves. No, if the will of your mother was that she wanted the same clothes which she wore in the month of Rajab, then take back your kafan. We have given her that kafan. We have fulfilled her wish. We have fulfilled her desire. Allah, Allah, subhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on them. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for their sake. This beautiful instance is mentioned in Nuzhatul Majalis. Allah, Allah. What, what a beautiful incident this is. First of all, this incident shows us the rank and the status of the beautiful month of Rajab. Secondly, we come to know that a person should use this month to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the words were, we do not leave the people who fast in Rajab to be stricken with grief in their graves. You fast in Rajab. What is fasting? Fasting is ibadat. It is the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So automatically from here we come to learn that First of all, the month of Rajab is excellent. Secondly, this month should be used for the worship and the ibadat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, subhanallah. And very beautifully, we also come to learn that when you make wasiyat, when you make wills to your children, to, your, to those around you, then your wasiyat should also be such that, you know, first of all, it should be in accordance to Sharia. It should be in accordance to the teachings of Allah and His beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And secondly, we should make good, good wills, good wasiyat. Not something which is harmful for another person, something which does not have any mean, meaning, something which is, which is futile. Alhamdulillah, many people today, when they go for Hajj and Umrah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take all of us with our parents, our relatives in the city of His beloved and most noble Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May we visit Makkah al-Mukarramah and Madinah al-Munawwarah for Hajj and for Umrah. Ameen, 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 ya Rabbil Alameen. But alhamdulillah, people make wasiyat in those that you know, the, the ihram they wear in, in the beautiful city of Makkah al-Mukarramah, then that ihram, they, they make wasiyat that make this ihram as my kafan when I leave this world. Why? Because it has nisbat to the city of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the city of the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because of that nisbat, alhamdulillah, there is a, a belief which Muslims have that, uh, you know, because the, the kafan has that, that link with the beautiful cities, then inshallah, azawajal, if we use those kafan in our, in, in our grave, it will be when, when it is with us, then inshallah, we will receive mercy from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanAllah. So this is how a Muslim should be. His wasiyat, his will should be in accordance to Sharia and it should be beautiful things, subhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us the true understanding of the deen and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to act upon the teachings of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ameen, ameen, ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. When this beautiful month of Rajab used to begin, then very beautifully, the Nabi, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa used to recite this dua. And everyone 
should make it a habit of reciting this dua. And what was the dua? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa used to say, Allah, Allahumma barik lana fi rajabi wa sha'bana wa ballighna ramadan. Allah, what, what a beautiful dua. That, oh Allah, bestow blessings upon us in Rajab and Shaban. Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Shaban. In Rajab and Shaban, Ya Allah, bestow bounties, bestow mercy upon us. Subhanallah, bestow blessings upon us. Wa ballighna Ramadan and make us reach and take us to the beautiful and wonderful month. Of Ramadan and Mubarak. Allah, Allah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Likewise, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam very beautifully mentioned Rajabun Shahrullahi Ta'ala. That Rajab is the month of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Wa Sha'banu Shahri. And Sha'ban is my month. Wa Ramadanu Shahru Ummati. And Ramadan is the month of my Ummat. Allah, Allah. Very beautifully divided Rajab in the month of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do istighfar, do the ibadat fast, perform nawafin, perform salah, do lots of ibadat in this month. Yes, in other months you also worship, but in this month increase it. Shaban shahri, Shaban is my month. If it's my month, then in this, in this month, you know, recite excess of durood upon Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, recite abundance of durood upon Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa Ramadan shahru ummati, and Ramadan is the month of my ummat, because in that month, my ummati is going to be forgiven, in that month, the ummatis get the mercy from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more compared to any other month. The, the, the forgiveness is double, the, the mercy is double, the bounties is double, the blessings is double, and not double only, multifold I would say. There is so much blessings and so many blessings in the month of Ramadan. Allah, 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 so very beautifully, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ramadan is shahru ummati, and Ramadan is the month of my ummah. So it's a month of taking full blessings. So all three months, starting from now, Rajab, Shaban, Ramadan, they all have great significance and great importance in the exalted court. Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, we make dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very beautifully enable us to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abundantly in this beautiful month of Rajab. Alhamdulillah, we do have a very beautiful uh, package ready with some beautiful Madani pearls. But before we go towards the, the Madani pearls, there is something I want to mention to you regarding the name Rajab. But what is the meaning of this of, of, of this word Rajab? This beautiful month is known as Rajab ul Murajab. So what is Rajab? The word Rajab, it has actually been derived from the word Tarjib. Tarajim Yaba. Tarjib. And Tarjib means to pay respect, to show adab. Allah Allah Allah. And this month is also known as Al Asab, which means fast flowing. Why, why fast flowing? Because the mercy, the rahmat from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is increased upon that person who asks for forgiveness in this month. For that person who makes tawbah in this month, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers upon him, it pours upon him. That's why the name of this month is also a fast flowing month. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanallah, subhanallah. This month is also called Al-Asam. And Al-Asam means the deaf. So what's the meaning of a deaf? Because in this month, the sound of war and dispute is not heard at all. Subhanallah. In this month is also known as Allah, Allah, Subhanallah, Shahru Rajm, the month of stoning, because the devils are stoned in this month so they cannot cause harm to the Muslims. What beautiful names. Rajab is derived from Tarjib. Tarjib means to show respect, means automatically we must show adab and respect towards this month. May it's deaf because the sounds of, of arguments and war and all of these things and disputes is not heard in this month. May it's also known as fast flowing because abundance of mercy is showered upon the person who worships, who asks for forgiveness in this month. And then it's also very beautifully known as Shahr Rajam because the devils are stolen in this month. When there's so many blessings, the name is indicating to you that listen, O oh believers, there is abundance of blessings in this month. Then why are you being negligent from not taking full advantage of the beauties and the wonders of this beautiful month? Make dua, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to worship in this month wholeheartedly. Alhamdulillah, we do have a beautiful package ready. Let's all uh, listen to some beautiful Madani pearls and inshallah as soon as we return, we will learn more about the beautiful month of Rajab al Murajab. Subhanallah, sallu wa habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam.
When the blessed month of Rajab approaches, it brings a wonderful feeling of happiness and peace. We'll have the privilege of collecting the blessings of Rajab and then the blessings of Shaban al-Mu'azzam. May we also become fortunate enough to seek forgiveness in the holy month of Ramadan. Ameen bijahin nabi ameen. Alhamdulillah, dear viewers. The arrival of the blessed month of Rajab al-Murajab has rekindled the remembrance of the holy month of Ramadan. On one hand, there is abundance of blessings of Rajab al-Murajab and Shaban al-Mu'azzam. And on the other hand, there is incomparable greatness of the holy month of Ramadan. Subhanallah. It is stated in the blessed hadith that when the month Rajab al-Murajab would approach, the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam would make this beautiful dua, Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Shaban wa ballighna Ramadan. Meaning, O oh Allah, bless us with blessings in Rajab and Shaban and make us reach Ramadan. Subhanallah. And in the explanation of this hadith, it is stated that it means, O oh Allah, grant us blessing in the acts of our worship during the month of Rajab, humility and devotion in the month of Shaban, and bless us with the month of Ramadan, with the privilege of fast and qiyam during this month. Subhanallah, what a beautiful dua it is. While following this beautiful sunnah of the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we should also keep reciting this dua whenever we remember, or at least after each fard salah, inshallah. Respected imams of the masjids can recite this dua after five times salah, or rather they can make the musallis recite it. It is requested to recite with the intention of sunnah, that if Allah Azza wa Jal wills, they will also get the reward and it will also be easier for the Musallis to memorize it. Rajab is the month of repentance, subhanAllah. So let's make this beautiful dua in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Shaban wa ballighna Ramadan. Ameen bijahin nabil ameen. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. SubhanAllah, very beautifully we learned about the meaning of uh, or the dua which a person should read in the beautiful month of Rajab al Murajab, subhanAllah. And indeed, this is the month of the mercy from the exalted court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, Allah, Allah. And what can be said about the virtues of the month Rajab? Very beautifully, it is mentioned in Mugashafatul Qulub, very beautiful book written by Imam. Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Muhammad al-Ghazali, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, one of the greatest Sufis of his time, such a great wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I would say master in tasawwuf, a personality whose work, his books such as Mukashafatul Qulub, Kinyaya Sa'adat, Ihyawul Ulum, and you know these beautiful books, Minhajul Abideen, they are such that it changes the heart of the person. Allahu Akbar. In Mukashafatul Qulub, Imam Ghazali very beautifully mentions that our pious saints, rahimahumullah, have stated there are three letters in the word Rajab Ra, Jim, and Ba. Three letters. And they say that the first letter, Ra, it stands for Rahmah, for mercy. The second letter, Jim, stands for Jurm, for crime. And the third letter, Ba, it stands for Bir, for kindness. So Ra is for mercy, Jim is for Jurm, for crime, and Ba is for Bir, for kindness. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that place my servant's crime, put the Jurm, the crime of my servant between my mercy and between my kindness. So I will cover his, 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 his son and his, his jurum, his crime, with the mercy and the kindness, and inshallah, azawajal, he will be forgiven in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. How beautiful the name is indicating towards you and telling you, that, come, come, come. This is the month to ask for forgiveness. This is the month to do the atonement of your sins. This is the month to cleanse all your sins and purify yourself so you can welcome the month of Shaban and the month of Ramadan al-Mubarak. Allah, Allah, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. Likewise, very beautifully Sayyidina Sheikh Allama Safuri, rahmatullahi ta'ala, has mentioned also, and this is mentioned in Nusratul Majalis as well, that he has mentioned that Rajab is the month for sowing the seeds. 
Rajab is the month for sowing the seeds. Shaban is the month for watering. And Ramadan is the month for harvesting the crop. Rajab the month for sowing. Shaban the month for watering. And Ramadan the month for harvesting the crop. Furthermore, he says, therefore, if someone does not sow the seeds of worship in the month of Rajab, and he does not water them with tears in Shaban, then how will he be able to harvest and take mercy in the month of Ramadan? Furthermore, the Sheikh states, and he says, Rajab purifies the body, Shaban purifies the heart, the heart, and Ramadan purifies the soul. Allah, 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 subhanAllah. What beautiful words of wisdom these are. That in the month of Rajab, it's the month for sowing, for sowing the seeds, the month for planting those seeds. So you need to plant the seeds of worship now. Now you need to perform your ibadat. Now you need to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to wake up at night. You need to perform your tahajjud. You need to do these extra ibadat. Prepare yourself now. Get in that movement. So in the month of Ramadan, it's not difficult for you because month of Ramadan, you need to wake up for sahri. You're going to perform tarawih late, late night. You perform nawafil. You do ibadat. There you mustn't become lazy. That's why now you must take full advantage of this month. Repair yourself, make your body. I mean, we all see that when a person needs to travel, all right, and let's say he has to go somewhere far. He's going with his family, with his friends, wherever he is going. And um, you don't find a person that, you know, he has to leave now and five minutes before that he checks the, the car with the suspension, the tires, the, the maybe the, you know, the steering wheel or the movement of the car, the engine, everything else is fine. No, he does this before. He does this earlier. If I need new tires, I'll make sure I change my tires. If I need the alignment, I'll do the alignment. If my suspension is not right, I'll check my suspension. I'll check the shocks. I'll check the brake pads. I'll do everything in the car. Why? Because so when I'm on that journey, there shouldn't be any difficulty. Otherwise, let me start the journey with that car. And halfway, if my car breaks down, if my car has a problem, if I stop in the corner or something, some issue happens, then who is it to blame? It's only myself. So for these kind of things, we prepare in ourselves for we prepare ourselves in advance so that during the journey there shouldn't be any difficulty, there shouldn't be any problem, there shouldn't be any sort of calamity. Allah Allah love, how beautiful Islam is. Islam is teaching you that now in the month of Rajab, start worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, start waking up, start doing extra ibadah, start putting your, your, your mind and your body in that movement. Why? Because you need to prepare for that month of Ramadan. So day doesn't become difficult. So as soon as Ramadan starts, you know, full on, you are ready to welcome the beautiful month of Ramadan. Otherwise, yeah, if you weren't preparing, and they, by the time you get used to it, the month of Ramadan is about to leave you. So what have you attained from the month of Ramadan? So all of this is actually a preparation for you to get grooving and moving for the month of Ramadan. Subhanallah. So beautifully he mentions if someone does not sow the seeds of worship in this month of Rajab and he doesn't water those seeds with the tears in Shaban. Allah, 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 Allah. Water them with the tears, with the tears in Shaban, the tears of remorse. If you can plant a seed in the ground, if there is no water, that seed will never ever become a seedling. Neither will it become a tree, neither will it become a plant. Nothing will happen. You have done the first step of planting. You worship Allah SWT. You have done lots of ibadat in this month of in the month of Rajab. But now the month of Shaban is coming. So it's time for you to ask for forgiveness. It's time for you to cry. It's time for you to feel remorse of your sins. Nobody should think that, you know, only in the month of Rajab we must worship. In the month of Shaban we must only ask for forgiveness. We shouldn't do worship. No, no, it works both sides. You worship in the month of Rajab, you worship in the month of Shaban, you worship in the month of Ramadan, and you worship in every other month as well. You cry in the month of Rajab, you cry in the month of Shaban, you cry in Ramadan, and you cry in every other month as well. But in this month it should be more. So you have planted the seeds of worship in the month of Rajab. Now the month of Shaban is there. You need to cry. You need to have the remorse. You need to have the guilt. You need to have that sorrow in your heart. And ask for forgiveness. I mean, if you are not going to cry in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then where are you going to cry? Where are you going to ask for forgiveness? Where are you going to, you know, get the kafara for your sins? Where are you going to get the forgiveness for your sins? Where are your sins going to be removed? Is there anyone in this world who you go by him and you cry in front of him and he will say your sins are forgiven? Is there anyone who can give you the guarantee that go your sins are forgiven if you come and cry in front of me? Is there anyone who says come and come by me and give me so much money in exchange I will remove all your sins? No! The only Zat who can forgive your sins, the only Zat who can pardon you, who can forgive you is only the Zat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
It's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is our Lord. We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He can forgive us. He may show mercy on us. He will show that affection, that kindness towards us. The only thing we have to do is go in his court. Go and ask for forgiveness. So this is the day. This is the time. The Shaban, a person goes in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He cries. You know, he, he, he has that sort of, of regret in his heart. Remorse. That you know, I have done sins. I'm a very filthy person. I've done lots of wrong things. Now he asks for forgiveness. Inshallah, you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive the sins of that person. Now he becomes pure. Now he becomes clean. Now he goes in the month of Ramadan. With a pure heart, with a clean heart, with a, with a pure actions, you know, with a fresh mind. Now he is ready to receive the mercy from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now he is ready to get the extra blessings from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How beautiful is this? So, Lama Safuri very beautifully mentions that if he did not worship in the month of Ramadan, he doesn't water those seeds with the tears of remorse in the month of Shabbat, then how is he going to harvest the mercy in the month of Ramadan? How is he going to do that? And furthermore, he says, Rajab purifies the body, Shaban purifies the heart, and Ramadan purifies the soul. It should be such that once these three months separate from you and they leave you, Rajab, Shaban, Ramadan, now your heart, your mind, your body, everything must be pure and clean. That when you are dirty, you go and have a shower, you bath, you make sure you remove the dirt, you make sure if there's any smell, you make sure if there's any, anything on your body, you take it out, and you make sure you are perfectly clean. And you come out fresh, you come out healthy, you come out happy. That's how it must be. These three months are here to, to, to clean you of everything. And once these three months leave you, now you must know your heart, your body, your mind, your soul, everything is purified. This is the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These three months are indeed the bounties from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In all of this we make dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to feel the excellence of these months. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really grant us the understanding of these beautiful months. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the privilege of worshipping in these beautiful months of Rajab, Shaban and Ramadan and in every other month as well. Subhanallah, a very beautiful hadith mentioned in Shu'abul Iman. Where Sayyidina Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu has mentioned that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has stated in paradise, in Jannah, there is a river called Rajab. The river's name is Rajab. Allah, Allah, Allah. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions whose water is whiter than milk and sweeter than honey. Whoever performs one fast of Rajab, Allah Azza wa Jal will make him drink from the water of the Sarab. Allah, Allah, what beauty, what excellency a person receives from the exalted court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One fast in the month of Rajab, and you will be given this water to drink. I mean, there's a river dedicated to Rajab. For those who fast in the month of Rajab, here yeah, this water is for you. And what's the qualities of this water? Whiter than milk, sweeter than honey. Doesn't, doesn't anyone want that, that, that water? I mean, just thinking about it, you know, brings water in your mouth. Just thinking, just thinking about it makes you want to have that water. What water is this? Whiter than milk? But it's not milk, it's water. Sweeter than honey? It's not honey, it's water. Don't I want to taste, don't I feel like tasting that water? Allah, 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 subhanAllah. Likewise, very beautifully, a tabi'i saint, Sayyidina Abu Kilaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu has mentioned there is a palace in Jannah, a palace in paradise for those who fast in the month of Rajab. Subhanallah, subhanAllah. Sayyidina Abu Umama, radiallahu ta'ala anhu has mentioned this is a very beautiful hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He mentions that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has stated that there are five nights in which dua, supplication is not rejected. The dua is definitely accepted in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And who is, and who is saying this? Our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After these five points, we will inshallah take a break for one of, for some few beautiful Lebanese pearls inshallah. But I want you to, to go for the break with these five beautiful nights in your mind. My Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says there are, there are five nights in which dua, supplication is not rejected. Number one, the first night of Rajab. Allah, the night has passed. Many of us have missed that night. If, you know, for those who have worshipped in that night, for those who asked, made wine that night, for those who asked for forgiveness, Mubarak to you all. 
But for those who, who didn't know, they didn't ask for anything, they didn't make dua in that night, you missed your chance, but there are four more nights. Very beautifully, number two, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions the 15th night of Shaban, Shabi Barat, Laylatul Barat, the night of decisions, the night of forgiveness, the night where your old book of deeds are closed and your new book of deeds are open, the nights in which decisions are made. Allah, Allah, Allah. Number three, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says the night between Thursday and Friday. And that's every week we get that beautiful night. Every week we have that night. But do we cherish that night? Do we know the value of that beautiful night? Number four, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says the night of Eid al-Fitr. Allah, the month of Ramadan has left you. It's the night of Eid. It's the night of making dua and the dua is accepted in the court of Allah. And number five, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says the night of Eid al-Adha, which is the 10th of Zul Hijjat al Haram. These five nights and my Nabi said Dua is accepted and definitely you must know Dua is accepted. The first night of Rajab, 15 night of Shaban, the night of Eid al-Fitr, the night of Eid al-Adha, and obviously very, very beautifully, the night between Thursday and Friday, which we get every week, make good intentions. And inshallah, Azza wa the first of Rajab passed us. But these nights are going to come. Thursday and Friday comes every, every, every week. We witness this beautiful night. Inshallah, every Thursday and Friday we will make dua in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the bottom of our heart. If you want to cry, we'll cry. If you want to ask sincerely, we should make the dua sincerely. The 15th night of Shaban will come next month, inshallah. Then the night of Eid al-Fitr, then the night of Eid al-Adha. So these one, two, three nights, big nights will still come, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant everyone the long life to witness these nights. With your parents, with your relatives, with your munshid e kareem you witness these nights in the city of Medina. Allah, Allah, Allah. And then you make dua from the bottom of your heart. From the bottom of your heart, you make dua, and inshallah, those duas will be accepted in the exalted court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. With these few words, we will take a short break now, inshallah, and listen to some few beautiful Madani pearls. And as soon as we return, inshallah, we will carry on with our beautiful discussion. Sallu wa habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Madi views of Madi channel. Alhamdulillah, Zjal. We are once again being blessed with the month of Rajab al Murajab. In this blessed month, our beloved Prophet وسلم, went on the journey of Miraj on the 27th night of Miraj to the heavens where they met our Creator Allah Almighty. And what gift did the beloved Prophet وسلم, bore back for the Ummah? It was Salah. When the Prophet وسلم, returned back, after visiting Allah Almighty, Hazrat Musa السلام, asked the beloved Prophet وسلم, what gift had he been given? The Prophet وسلم, replied that Allah Almighty had bestowed 50 salahs for his ummah. Hazrat Musa السلام, stated that your ummah will not be able to read the 50 salah. Therefore, go back and ask Allah Almighty to reduce this figure. The Prophet وسلم, then went back and returned and he continued doing this journey until the Salah was reduced to five. Alhamdulillah, my dear brothers and viewers on Madani channel, whoever reads the five daily Salahs will be rewarded for the 50 Salah. We now need to ask ourselves, how many Salahs do we read on a daily basis? Are we actually reading our Salah or are we neglecting this gift that which has been brought to us by the best of creation the beloved prophet sallallahu my dear views on Madin channel salah is the coolness of the eyes of the prophet sallallahu therefore we should read our, our five daily salahs with great enthusiasm so that we can gain blessings in this world and the hereafter. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam salatu wa salaman alayka ya Sayyidi ya Habibi ya Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad in nurin min nurillah subhanallah 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 Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has very beautifully mentioned the fast of the first day of Rajab is atonement for three years. The fast of the second day is atonement for two years. The fast of the third day is atonement for one year, and then the fast of each remaining day is atonement for one month. 
Subhanallah, subhanallah. Here, what is meant by atonement for sins that these fasts are the means of minor sins being forgiven in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. Likewise, a very, very beautiful hadith narrated by Sayyidina Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And this hadith is also mentioned in Shu'abul Iman that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has very briefly mentioned. Whoever performs one fast in the month of Rajab, it will be like the fasting of one year. Whoever performs seven fasts, the seven doors of hell will be closed for him. Whoever performs eight fasts, the eight doors of heaven will be opened for him. Whoever performs ten fasts, Allah Azza wa Jal will grant him whatever he asks for. And whoever performs fifteen fasts, an announcer makes an announcement and says, A caller announces, your previous sins have been forgiven, so start deeds afresh as your evil deeds have been replaced by good deeds, and whoever does more, my Nabi Sallallahu says, and whoever does more, may Allah Azza wa Jal grant him more. Allah Allah Subhanallah. One fast is equal to fasting of one year. It's like fasting one year, seven fasts, seven doors of Jahannam are closed, eight fasts, the eight doors of Jannah open for that person, ten fasts, Allah Ta'ala grants him whatever he asks, fifteen fasts, and an announcer makes, makes the announcement, your previous sins have been forgiven, start deeds afresh as your evil deeds have been replaced by good deeds. And then my Nabi says, whoever does more, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala grant him more. Is this still not a perfect motivation for you to fast in the month of Rajab al Marajab? Look at the reward you are getting from the court of Allah. Don't you want the seven doors of Jahannam to be closed for you? Don't you want the eight doors of Jannah to be open for you? Don't you want your fast to be like the fast of one year or like one year? Don't you want that whatever dua you make should be accepted in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Don't you want that your previous sin should be forgiven and you must start afresh? Start fasting in this month. Make it a habit of fasting. Start. I told you this month is a preparation for the month of Ramadan. In Ramadan, you need to fast the entire month. So from now, start making your body your strength. From now, start putting yourself in that movement. Inshallah, you will see the blessings in this world as well as in the hereafter. As well, Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam. Nabi sallam mentions further in the hadith that Nabi Nuh alayhi salam stepped onto his ark in Rajab. He himself fasted and ordered his companions to fast too. They also kept fast. His ark traveled for six months until the 10th of Muharram al Haram. In the month of Rajab, Shaban, Ramadan, Shawwal, Dhul Qadr, Dhul Hijjah, and then Muharram al Haram. This is how beautiful this Islam is giving you an opportunity for you to erase your sins, for you to wipe your sins, for you to gain mercy from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only thing you need to do is go and grab it with both your hands. With your hands, with your body, with everything you need to go and grab it tightly and take the opportunity. Who, who loses an opportunity? A fool. For example, if I have to keep a hundred thousand rand in front of you and you are standing just five feet away and I say, come and take the money. Are you going to say, no, it's too far? Or are you going to say, no, I can't walk until day? Or are you going to say, no, I can't do this? No, you'll take the opportunity. It's opportunity. You'll come, take the money and you'll go. This is how, without any example, this is how it is. Islam is giving you the opportunity. Yeah, here's a chance for you to get forgiven. Here's a chance for you to do ibadah. Here's a chance for you to rectify yourself. Here's a chance for you to gain mercy from the court of Allah. Here's a chance for you for your du'as to be accepted. Here's a chance for you to, to, to make sure you start rectifying yourself. We on the other hand are like, leave it. We'll see what happens in the month of Ramadan. We'll prepare in the month of Ramadan. We'll do everything in the month of Ramadan. No, start doing it now. Start rectifying yourself now. Start changing yourself now. Bring some change in yourself now. This, this is what Islam demands from you. You should learn how to become human beings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us the proper understanding of the deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability of having pity in ourselves. Very beautifully, Shaykh Muhaqqiq, Shaykh Abdul Haq Muhaddis Delvi, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, has mentioned the following hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rajab is a month among the months of hurma means the month of sacredness. And its days I, I inscribed on the door of the sixth sky. The sixth sky. If a person fasts for one day in Rajab and completes it with piety, and that day on which he fasted will seek forgiveness for him from Allah Azza wa Jalla and will say, Ya Allah, forgive the servant. If the person fasts without observing piety, that door and that day you will not seek forgiveness for him and they will say to him, your nafs has betrayed you. You need to fast 
and it should be with piety because fasting doesn't just mean remaining hungry and thirsty and doing every sort of wrong action no no fasting means yes you do remain hungry and thirsty and from your desires you do refrain from your other desires at the same time you control your tongue at the same time you control your eyes at the same time you control your ears at the same time you control your hands and your legs at the same time you control your body parts at the same time you control your mind at the same time you control your heart at the same time you control your feelings at the same time you need to do all of these things that is the proper fast fast with taqwa fast with piety yes you stayed hungry the entire day but you must all your salah you stayed hungry thus the entire day but you were arguing with your parents you stayed hungry and thus the other day the entire day but you did every every sort of wrong action then what did you gain from the fast what's the use of you fasting you have remained hungry and thirsty for no reason no yes you need to remain hungry and thirsty at the same time you need to do all of the other things then the fruit will come that the door subhanallah of the, of the door and the day in which you fasted that they will ask for forgiveness in the court of allah ya allah forgive this person ya allah forgive this servant so in conclusion of today's discussion we need to take away this lesson with us this month is not a month of spending heedlessly it's not a month where we should just pass our time it's not a month where we should just do every sort of filthy action no 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 it's a month of rectifying ourselves it's a month of worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's a month of reforming ourselves our lives and our lifestyles subhanallah subhanallah very beautifully and fortunately we have come towards the end of today's silsila and remember instill the love of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam in your hearts and your mind the love is everything if you lose this love you lose everything you have this love by allah you have everything we hope to see you soon be positive think positive stay positive may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you abundance of baraka abundance of happiness inshallah azza wa jalla we will meet you next week with a new exciting topic a new beautiful topic do join us inshallah only on your madri channel sallu ala alhabib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam the light of guidance 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 the light of guidance